think that that is being presented that way. And uh, we would like to make this very clear. Our camp campaign is not against an urgent treatment center. I think there can be an effective urgent treatment center with all the resources that the CCG already has through various services at our park site. We believe an urgent treatment center without the support of community services like the minor injury and walking centers is set to fail and that is why I believe that the CCG need to reconsider their proposals. Now there is a reality check and I don't want to go into these details and I hope these slides are going to be shared with the councillors. We did a survey of all GPs, not all federation, every single GP in Europe. Well, we had 128 responses. Over 90% of GPs said basically there is no capacity. They, over 90% said an urgent treatment center without community centers is going to fail. And when we asked the same questions to patients, they said 99% of patients actually said things are going to get worse. So I think we need to be mindful of what is being suggested here. The CCG is going to replace the minor injury services with a 0 to 19 service. Let us just take an analysis of this. We want to avoid confusion, but we want to add confusion to that because only people from 0 to 19 can attend the service. So if a mom of 23 has a problem and a child has a problem, she can take the child to this service, but she has to go to the urgent treatment center at Arrow Park Hospital. Now you're telling me that we are going to resolve confusion by having a service like this. I, I don't think so. Because I think what we need is also a discrimination against adults and older people. What we need is a service that is universal and I do believe it will be available for all age groups to avoid any confusion. This slide basically, this basically slide says what people are saying on social media, petitions, various things. Okay? We believe that it should changes be made. We would want to work with the CCG in making some changes and we are disappointed that we were not able to present proposals that could have been acceptable to all the people. And um, I think that we need to be looking at developing these services, particularly where the service is already being provided seven days a week. And we need to make this equitable across all the areas and areas like West World where there isn't a service. And if you need dressing clinics, we could do that even in the neighborhood across different uh, areas. In summary, we don't believe that this is a meaningful consultation with real options. We believe the CCG's proposals will cause significant harm to health of most vulnerable groups and will not achieve its desired objectives. It will create a crude care system and confusion and we commend the unanimous decision of the Council to oppose the CCG's proposals. In, again, in summary, we request that the overall scrutiny committee ask the CCG to suspend this consultation and present proposals that is acceptable to people and to various professional groups. If the CCG does not accept that recommendation and persists with pers forcing through these proposals, I think the matter should be referred to the Secretary. <laughs> Chucky, yeah. 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 excuse, excuse me, excuse me, can I ask you? I'm going Just now, I'm very not of Jackie. Thank you. Ah, I'm finished, Chair. Just to say that, you heard our voices, but what you need to do here is the other professionals and clinicians and patients, etc. And those are the videos, etc. They are on Facebook, YouTube, etc. I think this is important because in all my career, in 32 years in Guadal, I have never seen a proposal that has been so ill-conceived and it is going to cause so much harm. So I plead with you, not for the sake of any provider, but for the sake of people of Guadal, that we actually rethink how this is going to be done. Thank you.
What I would like to say is, if I can um, do things, there's a lot of mobile phones going on, uh, going on and off during the meeting, so can you please switch them off? And secondly, um, I understand, and um, I do understand, that this is a very emotional issue. Um, and the public want to let us know how they feel by clapping. What I won't accept is for people to be shouted out um, excessively. Officers are not here to be abused. They're here to present their um, presentations to you and we're here to listen so that we can then consult fully and make some recommendations. So I'd please ask you to observe that. Thank you. And um, we've got Mark back again. And um, so if I can take some questions around the table. Um, now I've got a couple of people already. If, if you, for those questions relevant now. Okay, so I've got um, Councillor Jones, Councillor Mosspratt, Councillor Norbury, and Councillor Rennie. In that order, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, my question is for um, the Public Commissioning Group. Um, as a nurse in the NHS, a senior nurse in the NHS, I'm well aware that the, the, we, we struggle within the NHS to recruit nursing staff at the moment following the removal of the nursing bursaries and potentially you know there could be migration of nursing staff out of the country following Brexit in March. Um, Sorry Sharon, can I just say that these questions are to Dr Mancarney and Dr Fraser so anything that's um, to the CCG that would be at the end. Oh right, okay, so sorry I'll come back to that. Thank you. So um, who should be on next councillor? Most proud please. Um, my question is for you, Dr. Could you just repeat the proposals that you made? I didn't quite catch at all. Um, at the end, you, you the two proposals. Okay. I think my proposal was that I think the CCT should take a pause with this consultation and work with all the providers and professional groups and also uh, patients to come back with other proposals which will ensure that community services are safe and at the same time we can have an urgent treatment centre. And I think if the CCT is not prepared to do that, I think if they want to force this to through, I think the matter should be referred to the second minister. Again, I would like to reiterate that this is not about, we are not opposed to an urgent treatment centre at Aropa. I do believe we will be, I mean, in fairness, we have started to have some discussions. We will be, now that we have more information on the freedom of information, we will present a lot more data back to the CCG. Because as this consultation started, there are certain presentations and slides from Jack Evans and etc. They still talk about 38% and 40% going to a &D or back to the GPs. Actually, it's disappointing to see that they know very well that that's not an actual figure because the accurate figure for minor injury services is between 2 to 3 percent, not 38 percent. I think if there are certain providers are sending all their patients to GPs out, then that is a matter for the CCG as a commissioner to have monitored and actually presented that separately. So, I'm, so I think uh, I, that's where I'm coming from. I do believe that to have a successful urgent treatment centre, we need to have a good robust structure in the community where people can go to. This notion that 37 people go to the hospital and, and they'll go to somewhere else, uh, again, I would challenge that whole thing. I know that I was given 10 minutes so I kept my uh, presentation. I didn't go through the bullet point. People have talked here today about having more GP appointments, etc. Uh, I'm sure Dr. Fraser will speak for himself, but we know for a fact that 100% of the GP appointments that our federation provides are done in general practice. And I know for a fact that that is not necessarily the case because 60 to 65% of the GP appointments are being currently provided at Arrow Park Hospital. So we are not, we are going to, so when Dr. Cohen and others say we're going to have another 1400 or whatever it is, that means it will be doubled up at Arrow Park site, along with the urgent treatment center and along with the AAD service. And what that will leave the community services drain of resources. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Norbury, please. 
I'd like to ask, you painted a picture there regarding uh, people actually dying because um, they couldn't get into the A&E. Ambulances queued up, um, the A&E in, in a terrible situation. Can you, can you elaborate on that and, and tell us really why that is happening? And I suspect it's not because um, we can't cure that by shuffling the pack and redesigning um, our services. Because you also mentioned that um, we only have got so much funding. There's a cap, there seems to be some sort of cap on funding for our NHS, which I don't really understand how that works. Because I thought the NHS was free at the point of use and that we grew our NHS along with the provision that, that we need. Because what we're saying is we've got a growing need where people are getting older, but we're not giving the NHS any more money, which is causing people to basically die in A&E. Is that right? Uh, I think I'm qualified to answer a little bit of that. Um, yes, the NHS is free at the point of care at this moment in time, and I hope that forever that continues to be the case. Um, I know that the amount that it costs to deliver the NHS goes up every year by much more than the amount of money that comes to the NHS goes up. There are a variety of reasons for that, one of which is that we can do more and more stuff with more and more expensive stuff for people for longer and longer. Every time you cure somebody of cancer who doesn't die of a heart attack, they stay alive for other things that cost money, so there's an accumulative basis on that. The population is growing as a consequence of that with more and more things that we've diagnosed and we can treat. So there is no doubt that we're underfunded. There is a limit to the funding, but there is really very little limits on what we can do as clinicians now. Um, it, 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 it's, it's a new world from where we were 30, 40 years ago. Um, but that's like, way beyond my pay trade stuff, I would fund that NHS. Um, as far as your question started about was, can I elaborate on what, why these things happened? I think to some extent I've already done that, in that the, <clears throat> the health service that we work in is a mythical thing. There is no national health service, and anyone who thinks there is, is deluded. There are, I don't 